Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. These hoes don't get mad at Megan. These hoes mad at Megan's law. Is it my fault I got good vagina? Why the fuck is you humping on a minor? Cause she was lying and I did my mom. All right, tea sippers, I am back with the voiceover. Um, child, when I tell you these past 24 hours have been nuts, okay? Now, y'all remember Friday I did the live stream. We were listening to Nikki rant and rave on station, had about Meg Thee Stallion. You know, she had all types of jokes. She was blaming Roman. And so she let everybody know that Bigfoot was coming. Okay, she was coming with the song Bigfoot. She wasn't gonna play no games with Megan. And Megan dropped his, okay? And his had some good bars. And of course, there was that bar that truly, truly got under Nikki's skin. These hoes don't get mad at Megan. These hoes mad at Megan's law. I don't really know what the problem is, but I can't see y'all on me store. Which was about Megan's law. Okay, that really bothered Nikki because not only is Kenneth Petty, you know, having to register everywhere he moves, but we also know her brother is also in prison, you know what I'm saying, for doing what the hell he did to that baby. So, you know, this whole situation is crazy, but we wanted to give Nikki a chance. I think the whole internet wanted to give Nikki a chance to respond, you know, because she said she had, you know, some dope tracks. She had all this tea. She claimed she talked to Kelsey. Um... I mean, but I see, well, put it this way. We were waiting for you. We were waiting. We were waiting. I just got off the phone with Kelsey. So as you see, somebody ended up DMing Kelsey. And so they said, hey, Kelsey, sorry to bother you. I'm contacting you because Nikki's on station head. And she's mentioning your name since she got receipts and trying to look like she talked to you. Is that true? And then she wrote Nikki Minaj. And then she says, I'm just letting you know that she's mentioning your name in her shenan in the shenanigans. Then basically, Kelsey finds out what Nikki's saying. She said, I'm going to keep silent and see what happens next. I don't know what the hell is going on, LOL. I haven't spoken to anyone. So once again, catching Nicki Minaj up in a lie, she's saying that she never spoke to Nicki. Even though Nicki claimed that she had all these receipts from Kelsey, Kelsey is saying otherwise. So it looks like Nicki's once again caught up in a lie. So anyways, everybody's been hyped up about this whole situation. Y'all just heard the snippets of the song. When I tell you, I had took a nap earlier that day. We went to church, you know what I'm saying? Had a good, good church service. Came home, you know, laid down, and we were all in Telegraph talking because, you know, you know, shout out to the one Barb in Telegraph, Malachi. So he was super excited. You know, we're like, hey, we have no real dog in this fight. You know, most of the Telegraph is Barty gang, but, you know, we still got love for the cool Barbs. And so... I said, okay, once she drops it, because first she's supposed to drop it at 3 p.m., nothing came. Then they said it was going to be 9, nothing came. Then they said it was 11. I said, well, you know what? When she decides to drop it, y'all at me. So around 11, literally, it wasn't up five minutes. I'm getting tagged. I get up, go to listen to it. That's when I started screen recording. I posted it on social media. And I'm thinking I'm about to hear, like, some bars, like, oh, shit, I'm ready. Nikki, you literally regurgitated everything you have been saying and tweeting. Remember, for 48 hours, she was sitting here dragging Megan. One of the lines that she said, because we posted it, she says, Megan's Law for a free beat. You can hit hashtag Megan Raw. Sincerely, Ronan. Okay? It was so many things that she was tweeting that ended up in this song. So basically, to me, this song was legit one big tweet. This was just two minutes of recycled tweets. This was, you know, another two minutes of her ranting and raving. This was not a diss track. I just, I wasn't feeling it. And it seemed like a lot of people weren't feeling it. We expected better, you know, especially being that she calls herself the queen of rap. And we all know Nicki has skills. But guess what? Like I've always said, Megan has skills too. Megan can also rap. 
I expected more and I left more confused. I'm like, you know what? We need a refund because we don't walk up out our sleep. We don't set timers to hear this shit, okay? I had people like literally timed and call me when it's up. A lot of barbs are even tired of the antics. I mean, you have some that are going to go hard for Nikki because she's Nikki. But I was shocked at how many barbs are like, no, you took it too far. You're talking about her dead mom. You just lost a parent. Like the social media reaction was insane. And, you know, like I said, her fan base can be very toxic and they're going to go hard for her. So for a lot of her fans to be like, no, this is trash. I'm not feeling this. She dropped the ball is insane. They were literally like, you know, hyping Nikki up. You know, they had their jokes. You know, they were going in. Nikki was retweeting people. Like, everybody was waiting for this song. And this song was not giving what she thought it gave. I'm sorry. Just keeping it real. Like I said, both ladies are talented. But I know y'all are calling his piss Barbies. Okay, I get that. But honestly, Megan took the assignment seriously. She came in. She didn't even really mention names. She said, you know, hit dog will holla. She came in, she dropped her track. There wasn't a bunch of kikiing and giggling. She understood the assignment. She's like, I'm releasing a diss track and I'm about to diss some people. Nikki, you released a diss track and you spent literally two minutes once again ranting and raving. This is a diss track, not station head. I don't want to hear all that outside stuff. The beat was fire though, I will say that. That's the one good thing I can say. The beat was hard. And when she was rapping, she killed the beat. But it's just like, you're literally recycling everything you said on social media. I really didn't get any new tea. And it seemed like most of the stuff that she was rapping about is hell. Stuff that I've been said on YouTube about Meg. We know this tea. We know there was some shit between her and G-Eazy and DaBaby and Tor. We know that. We needed new tea. And it just, it didn't give what I thought it was going to give. And what a lot of people thought it was going to give. So we're going to go ahead and just, you know, listen to other people's reviews of what they thought about it. Check this out. Megan Bad score. bitch, she like six foot. I call a big foot. The bitch fell off. I said, get up on your good foot. Um, you better go conjure up your mother and apologize. That's disgusting. Oh, Nikki, no, 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 I may cut this out. Should I cut this out? Um, okay. Um, Nikki. Nikki, you can't say stuff like that. You can't. Because if she said something about your father, now we... You know, there's a low <laughs> in beef. There's a low. And I said in my original video, I was like, Megan, I want you to go lower. And I just want Megan to find something else that we haven't heard before. That's all. That was a pretty, that was the point. But for Nikki to go on here on Station Head, and now you were just dragging it out. If you, if she would have left it at the Instagram Live, like, okay, that was my clap back for now, but I'm coming back with a whole record, then I'd be like, Nikki is that girl. You ate that. 
But that one joke is not carrying over because why are you still going, queen? You don't need to keep going. No, 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 no. You don't need to keep going. You don't just stop talking. See, this is the thing people not understanding. I don't care what Nikki says on that track. She could come on that track singing, oh, McDonald had a phone. It's still going to be Team Nikki today, tomorrow, and forevermore. What are y'all talking about? This is the queen. Y'all are crazy. See, real recognize real. You bitches just ain't real. Is this the thing she get for putting you bitches on? Snakes hiss before they attack. So, Miss Chun Li, I suggest you gorilla glue down that Chinese bang, super glue them bamboo earrings into your ear, and get ready because that was simply just a fucking warning. Could you imagine being the parents of Megan Kanka and seeing a law that you created in honor of your daughter trending simply because another woman doesn't want another woman to exist in the same space as her? Imagine seeing a law that you created trending because someone intentionally married the same type of person that that law was against. In the past 24 hours, that one singular Megan's Law Bar from a three-minute song has made that lady spaz on Instagram Live, Twitter Spaces, Facebook Messenger, Periscope, Skype, and Uvu. But she has yet to make it over to a fucking booth. But you're the queen of rap though, right? Get in the fucking booth and fight back, Chun-Li. During her many drug-induced rants, she has implied and insinuated a bunch of shit to distract us from the fact that she has not booked a studio session. She has brought up Megan's album and single sales and said that her shit is always flopping, even though, survey says, just a few years ago, you were the same woman that said album sales and streams did not matter. But now, since your fans have gotten a 50 cent raise down at the Piggy Wiggly and are able to actually buy your shit, streams and sales matter. Which one is it? She also implied that she spoke directly to Kelsey, and even though Kelsey wide mouth ass did not get on this internet and defend herself when they were saying that she's the one that pulled the trigger, she made sure she got on here and let us know that she did not speak to you, Otis. But wait, there's more. Miss Pills and Potions also said that Megan calls Cardi a dirty Mexican. Even though survey says once again, but wait, there's more. Miss Pills and Potions also said that Megan calls Cardi a dirty Mexican. Even though survey says once again, that's what you and your weird wicked Barbies refer to Cardi as. And your like tweets are proof of that. Next on the fucking list, she implied that during the shooting of the Hot Girl Summer music video, Megan forced her to drink and even implied that she should go to the clinic and get rid of her baby after she told her that she might be pregnant. And to be honest, that advice should have been fucking taken because who the fuck purposely has a baby by a sex offender? But again, survey says that from all the footage that we've seen from that live, you were the one forcing her to drink those open candy sprites that have sat on the counter too long that you want to call a Moscato. He even decided to go low and bring up Megan's dead mother and say that Megan lied on her mother's name about being shot. Even though, survey says once a fuck again, less than six hours ago, you were the same woman hooping and hollering on live about how she only had one good foot. So why would she only have one good foot? I ask you, did she lie about getting shot or did she actually get shot? Which one is it? And bringing up her dead mother as if your father wasn't just glued to the asphalt down in Long Island not too long ago, it's absolutely insane. Imagine doing all of this because someone simply informed the general public that you have to alert authorities every time you move. That's the fucking fact. What she said was not a lie. That's actually your real life. That's the life that you chose for yourself. But the reason why that Megan's Law Bar hit you so hard is because it can apply to many men in your life. Megan has dropped a three minute song in a music video and has not said not one single thing to you. But you have come up with 3,000 think pieces and went through eight white bricks in the last 24 hours. But you have yet to get your ass in the motherfucking booth. Put that shit on wax or leave it on the fucking playground. And you, of all people, should be very familiar with playgrounds, seeing as though you're the only one in your family able to visit them. Queen of hip hop and 99.9% .9 of the subs and disses that the other rap girls in the industry throw at you are not even about you. They're about your husband. Can you imagine if every jab that the media takes at you, every jab that people on the internet take at you, don't have anything to do with you? It has to do with accusations about your husband. Accusations that were made about your husband when he himself was a child, by the way. Accusations about a man who is not only your husband, but the father of your child. Can you imagine that in the world of hip hop, the rap girlies can't write anything about you. They can't come at you for anything you've done. 
So they constantly attack your husband and your family. Can you imagine that one day your three-year-old son is gonna grow up and hear this record that this young lady, Megan, wrote dissing your husband and your family and he is going to have to come to understand the legal meaning of the term Megan's law. Look it up. Can you imagine that one day your baby is gonna go on the internet and see all the evil remarks made about his family, made about his father, despite the fact that his father's own accused retracted the claims made against him years ago. And can you imagine that when you try to stand up for the man that you've made a lifetime commitment to, when you try to stand up for your son, people call it spiraling because you're not allowed to defend your family when people attack your family because you're a global superstar, you're already wealthy, and you're too old because when you turn 40, you're supposed to just roll over and die. Can you imagine that? Like since when is there an age limit on defending yourself? And so when Nikki mentions this woman's family, she's taking it too far, right? Because it's okay when other people attack Nikki's husband and Nikki's child and Nikki's little family. That's not taking it too far. But as soon as Nikki responds mentioning this young lady's family, she's taking it too far. The hypocrisy in this situation is glaring. It's impossible to not see how hypocritical the media is and folks on social media have been. And while it might be cool to make a hit comment on the shade room or make a viral tweet, just remember that you're doing that at the expense of someone's family. And remember that this person is also a human being, no matter how rich, no matter how famous. This creator's rant about how terrible he thinks Nicki Minaj is went viral. And now he and his family are being doxxed by the bar. Just in case you didn't see his rant, I'm gonna play it for you right now. Nicki Minaj is essentially the Dr. Seuss of her time. And what I mean when I say that is she's objectively a disgusting and reprehensible person by pretty much all metrics of basic humanity and common decency. Yet her one singular talent that appears to be an innate ability to rhyme words together in a silly fashion that particularly resonates with children has cemented her with a legacy she really does not deserve as much as many female rappers who came before her. In case you're not already up to date, the self-proclaimed queen of rape has spent the past 24 hours deflecting from the fact that her husband husband is a convicted sexual predator who is not allowed near public parks or elementary schools by making fun of Megan the Stallion for getting shot as well as referring to her as Bigfoot. It's always amusing to me how Nicki Minaj immediately jumps to making fun of other people's appearances as if she didn't spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in 2008 getting illegal Craigslist butt injections from some guy in his basement. And not just that, she lied about it for 10 years and only confessed after her ass cheeks were visibly deflating in public and everybody could already tell. And listen, I'm not at all reveling in the fact that she's a terrible person. I was a very big Nicki Minaj fan growing up. Ask anybody who went to middle school with me. I loved her so much. I would defend her to anybody who would listen. I saw her doing that. And I was like, huh, finally some real music. However, around 2018, when she started intentionally surrounding herself with sex offenders, I kind of fell off the wagon. She was announcing her associations with them faster than she was dropping new music. And it's always especially humorous to me when I see Nicki Minaj as well as her fans attempt to defend her by saying you only attack the men she associates with for being sexual predators because you don't have anything on her mm, i beg to differ barbs because not only are we talking about a woman who once gave a lap dance to a 13 year old boy we're talking about a woman who once made a song with a then 16 year old little twist in which she says these lyrics in conclusion yeah she's uh she's going to hell let's hope all that silicone doesn't release too many toxic fumes while she's burning since the rant has gone viral, he has deleted. All right, so y'all just saw, child, the memes, the gifts, the commentary on TikTok. Everybody and their mama has something to say. When I tell you all of these social media platforms have been on fire today over this Bigfoot song, lots of opinions. Some people will always be Team Nikki and have her back. Some people are like, I'm done with her. This was way too low. You know, talking about Megan's mom. And a lot of the barbs have been on social media acting a fool. Um, it was even rumored that a few barbs found out where Megan's mother was buried and they wanted people to go up there and desecrate the grave. Um, here goes a meme right here where they're talking about it. And um, this is really sad. I think some of the fandoms are taking things way too far it is never that serious. Child, it's been a long day. Now, Megan did reply yesterday, and I was kind of confused by the reply at first, but then um, I was told 
that this had to do with, um, you know, Japanese anime flowers because Megan is into anime. And that basically means like death is coming. When you see these flowers, that means you done fucked up. So I definitely think that Meg is going to be coming back and she's going to be coming back even harder. Um, but yeah, this whole rap beef situation between the girls, honey, it's insane. But I want to hear from you all. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Are y'all here for this? Are y'all not here for this? How do y'all feel about Bigfoot? Do you guys feel like it was a bop or do you feel like it was a flop? How do you guys feel about Megan's song? And we're also going to be doing a call-in show about 7 o'clock on my app. If you have not downloaded my app, make sure you guys download it. It's on the Google Play Store, also on the Apple Store as well. And we'll be taking in calls via the app. You know, let us know. I want to hear from y'all, so make sure y'all tune in about 7 o'clock. Also, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. And I'll see y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.